In the video today, we are answering a viewer question because Sandro asks us, what happens if you never give your child a name? Well, let's get into it. So the legally mandated thing that happens in the United States is that the hospital assigns the name of that baby as Mac Weldon because they make awesome daily men's essentials and they signed a lucrative branding deal with the US Department of Births. <laughs> Not really, obviously, but they do make daily men's essentials that are so good that that should actually happen. I want to tell you about Mac Weldon before we get into the video today. Now, back in April, Mac Weldon, they sponsored one of our videos and they sent me a t-shirt that they basically said it wouldn't start to smell even if I wore it for a week. I wore that shirt for eight days in a row. Uh, I chronicled the journey, the adventure of smell or no smell actually on Twitter. If you want to follow me on Twitter for more stuff like that, uh, it's not always about me trying to make a shirt smell. I'm at Simon Whistler. Now the technology that makes it happen in a shirt like that is known as magic and it worked really well. This time Mac Weldon, they sent me some more stuff which is perfect for summer. I'm going to stand up again and my head is going to get cut off. I can move back but then I'll go out of focus but they sent me these shorts they're pretty excellent it's like this super soft stuff I mean I'm smart upstairs casual downstairs it's a heat wave in Europe right now so this is pretty perfect um they also sent me some uh, exercise shorts I'm not going to change into these things right now that's a real hassle when I do the clap thing but uh these are same size just that fabric that kind of doesn't go horrible when you sweat into them they also sent me this. These are swim shorts. It's summer, perfect time for that. These are a little bit shorter, so you don't have that kind of ridiculous below the knee uh, surfer style swim shorts going on, which I personally despise. And then also they sent me some underwear. Just kidding, I'm not gonna put my underwear on on camera. It's not that sort of video. They sent me these. These aren't just, they're just insanely comfortable stuff. Um, it's just, it's just better. It's just better. Let me sit back down. All of this stuff, it's just ultra soft, it's ultra comfortable. I would rub this against my face to demonstrate this, but this is underwear. Uh, I, I feel like the word ultra is used a lot in the Mack Weldon brands, but it really do fits. I, the way, I honestly love this stuff. Now, I'm the sort of guy who I just used to buy the cheapest underwear and undershirts that I could possibly find, usually in H&M or even like in the clothing part of a supermarket. Uh, because I thought no one sees it. Why does it matter? The reality is I was living in ignorance, but break out of your mental prison people because the comfort is insane. It just makes a huge difference. Just do it. It also supports this show, which is amazing. And I also want Mac Weldon to keep sending me free stuff. So if you support the show, they'll keep doing that. I love the free stuff they send me. So there's that. Just do it. There's a link below or go to MacWeldon.com and enter the code BRAINFOOD, one word, and you get 20% off. Just go and do it. And please use that code BRAINFOOD because otherwise I don't get credit for being the hero that sent you to Mac Weldon. Let's get into it for real this time. It turns out that there are a shocking number of rules and regulations concerning what parents can name their children when the naming has to happen by, and even a section of the United Nations Convention on the Rights of a Child that specifically states that all people from birth have to have an inalienable right to have a name. This all brings us around to the topic of today, and that's what happens if parents flout that right and just don't name their baby. And further, what are some of the rules surrounding what names can be chosen in the first place? To begin with, let's start with the easiest, the United Kingdom. In this case, you have 42 days to name your baby, during which you can expect to occasionally be pestered by officials if you're taking your sweet time getting around to it. If you pass that time period, you will receive a £200 fine, and if you still refuse to give a name, a government official will name the child for you. That said, in some cases, UK officials may allow you to extend the period a bit beyond the 42 days, so long as you convince them that a resolution seems reasonably close at hand. You pay the fine and you keep them notified of the progress. Further, UK parents have up to a year after birth to submit a correction to a name should there be an error in official documentation or if the parents just change their minds and want to rename the child. Beyond giving quite a lot of time for parents to pick a name, unlike a lot of countries on the other side of the pond, the UK is also pretty lax about what names you can pick, generally having few guidelines other than that it cannot contain obscenities, numbers be impossible to pronounce, and must not contain a title that could be misleading. Should you choose to flout these rules and try to name your child Sir six 
face Whistler, you can expect the registering officer to go ahead and reject all but the Whistler part of that name. In contrast, in countries like Norway and Denmark, you are required to pick from an approved list of names. In most countries that have such rules, including these two, you can attempt to deviate from the list if you go through the proper paperwork and approval first. Failure to get prior approval for an unlisted name will usually result in some sort of fine, and either the state rejecting the name submission outright, or if it slips through, the child's name may be forcibly changed later. For example, in one case in 1995, a Norwegian woman, Christy Larsen, attempted to name her 14th child Gersha, which is Hebrew for bridge. Christy claims that the name came to her in a dream. The state, however, didn't care about her nocturnal hallucinations and fined her the equivalent of $420, which is about $700 today. Unfortunately for her, when she refused to pay the fine, she was arrested and put in jail. She stated of this, if we accept the fine, it's like we're admitting some kind of guilt. <laughs> Which you were guilty of, Christy. She further brazenly stated no matter what the courts say, we're still calling Gersha Gersha. While not as strict as Norway, many other nations in Europe do similar things with varying guidelines generally centered around trying to ensure the child is not given an outlandish or offensive name. For example, in the early 2000s, a couple living in Germany attempted to name their child Osama Bin Laden, a man they seemingly admired a great deal for whatever reason. This broke two naming rules in Germany. First, this name was likely to lead to humiliation for the child, and second, it was against the rules in the couple's home country of Turkey as well, which also made it against the German rules. Germany is also one of a surprising number of nations that require the child's name to indicate what gender they are. If it's unclear because it's a foreign name, generally the German officials will simply reach out to officials from other countries where the name is common, if any, for their input before approving or denying a name. Another example of this is France. While they have relaxed their rules significantly about the naming of children in recent years, you still cannot pick a name for a child which might be construed as the child being a different sex than their name is usually associated with, much to the chagrin of one French woman who tried to name her daughter Liam. Going back to what happens if parents don't name their child, Germany is also one of many, many countries where if you fail to choose a child's name after the allotted time period, in this case four weeks, an official will simply choose for you. In cases where the state picks, officials seemingly almost always just select one of the more popular names in a given country for a given sex of child, except in the United States, which as ever does things slightly differently. To begin with, there is basically no standardization from state to state within the US with regards to naming children, nor standard time period where this needs to occur. The few rules that do exist tend to be more practical in nature, for example, not allowing special characters simply because the state's database data type for the name field doesn't support them. There are also usually basic rules about how the last name should be chosen to facilitate dispute resolution should there be contention. For example, in Louisiana, if the mother was unmarried, 300 days before the birth, so slightly before conception in the vast majority of cases, the mother's maiden name will get precedence in a dispute, whereas if she was married at the time, the father's, unless both parents agree to something different or there is otherwise no dispute. That said, as database systems are updated, rules sometimes change. For example, after a software update, Illinois began allowing numbers to be put in names or even the name itself to be a number like seven, which is what at least one couple was found to choose as the middle name for their son, no doubt after watching Seinfeld. There are also states such as Alabama, Kentucky, Washington State, and Montana that don't even require the last name to match the parents at all, able to be pretty much anything you want within the bounds of the few other aforementioned rules about character restrictions. That said, a few states do include laws concerning use of offensive terms such as California, who not only extend this to the naming of babies, but also to what you can change your own name to. For instance, in 1992, California courts barred a man from being able to change his own name to Mystery N-Word. Moving on to what happens if the baby is not named after whatever period, usually in the ballpark of a week to a few weeks, with some buffer period after for changes without additional fees or hassle, it turns out there is no official standard here either. To start with, Michigan, Connecticut, and Nevada do not require a person to have a legal name at all, not even a last name, for their birth certificate to be processed. As far as we can find, this has never caused a significant issue anywhere, other than in one court case where a Connecticut judge needing to clarify 
modify the rules here, was completely flummoxed when he tried to look into the matter, stating, The court has inquired of dozens of Connecticut lawyers and judges, and no one has supplied even a portion of an answer to the question, how is a person's legal name established? In general, what seems to happen in these cases is that if a parent forgoes naming their child within the allotted time before a birth certificate must be processed, no name is given and the parents are simply allowed to submit one later when they ultimately decide on one. That said, because of certain federal requirements, such as when trying to get a social security card, passport, etc., as well as when trying to register a child for school and things of that nature, for practical reasons, a name will inevitably be officially submitted at some point, which is perhaps why it's not ever really an issue, despite the lack of official state rules. Other states, like Ohio, simply require that, at minimum, a surname be given for the birth certificate to be processed, and then, in Ohio's case, they give you a year to decide on the full name. So what about the more general case in the United States, where a name is required to process a birth certificate and the parents do not want to give one? Well, the baby, in that case, will be given a name. However, unlike in many other nations, where this name would be something common within the nation, in the US, the name given will almost always be something like baby boy, male, baby girl, female, or just baby, with an appropriate surname tacked on. In the case of twins, something like baby girl A and baby girl B, or baby one and baby two are also common. <laughs> Very creative stuff. Exceptions do exist, though, for abandoned babies and the like, where occasionally officials will select a proper name for the child if a relative of the child can't be found and willing to take them in and name them. As to the more common case of indecisive parents, these baby boy style names are a result of what hospital staff use as a placeholder in the hospital database until the parents give the baby a name. If the parents then fail to ever give an official moniker, the placeholder name inevitably gets used in the birth certificate processing, which is also typically handled by hospital staff. It should be noted here that studies have shown that this practice of hospitals, basically giving the child the same first name if the parents haven't provided one, absolutely increases the odds of issues for the baby while in the hospital, usually in the form of mix-ups with treatment and medication and things like that. For example, this could happen if there are two baby boy Smiths in the NICU at the same time. To help resolve this admittedly rare issue, some hospitals have switched to further tacking on the mother's name, so Jennifer's boy Smith instead of baby boy Smith. Of course, in more recent times, this is even less likely to occur anyway thanks to commonly used wristbands with ID chips or barcodes to reduce the risk of scrubs anywhere, though they still do happen. To further simplify things on their end, some hospital workers will also attempt to pressure the parents into giving the child a name as quickly as possible, and even in some accounts we read actually tell the parents that it's required by law to give the baby a name before the baby is allowed to be taken home. However, despite what any hospital official may tell you, in the United States this is not required. Nor is it required that in home births the midwife or you give the baby a name right away, it's just simply required that you report the birth to the appropriate state department. Now, while you might think that surely no parents would allow their child to be named something like baby boy, it does occasionally happen. Not always about not caring or inability to agree on a name, however, some parents feel the child themselves should pick their own name, and because it's a fairly straightforward and relatively inexpensive process in the US to change the name later, using the hospital's placeholder name for official documents at first isn't usually a big deal. Perhaps the most famous example of this is Olympic skier Peekaboo Street, whose name was originally Baby Girl. Peekaboo explains, At first my parents didn't have a name for me. My name on my birth certificate reads Baby Girl, and that's what they called me until I was almost four. When they planned our first train trip to Mexico for vacation, we needed passports. My father liked the sound of Peekaboo, an old Native American settlement an hour south. I also liked playing Peekaboo with him. My mother and father agreed on Peekaboo. If you're wondering, supposedly peekaboo meant silver water. In any event, many countries likewise make it no big hurdle to change a child's name, usually just a bit of paperwork and a fee, so long as both parents agree, or if one parent isn't in the picture, that this can be conclusively demonstrated first. That said, delaying doing so in the US does potentially open things up to a judge's discretion on what might be acceptable, whereas naming from birth in the US usually has few, if any, restrictions other than on the character set.
Finally, we should probably mention that in 46 of the 50 states in the US, should you name your child something silly like Tallulah does the hula from Hawaii, more on this in a bit in the bonus facts section, but everyone calls you K and you yourself accept that as a name, that is now legally your name if you want it to be. However, for certain official documents at the federal level, like passports, you still may need to get the courts to give you official documentation of the change. But outside of this, you are allowed to use your chosen name as your official legal name even if it doesn't match what's on your birth certificate and you never went through any official process to get it changed. We're guessing that little Adolf Hitler, yes, another one we're going to be talking about in the bonus facts section, is pretty thankful for that one, regardless of what his parents' political views are. And now for some bonus facts. In countries with few regulations on what a parent can name their children, like the US and the UK, relative ease of changing a name is probably a good thing. For example, consider the case of Heath Campbell, who has a whopping nine children by five different women. The New Jersey man has named every one of his kids with a Nazi theme. For example, little Adolf Hitler Campbell, Joycelyn Aryan Nation Campbell, and Eva Braun Campbell. Apparently, for reasons completely unrelated to the names, the state has taken custody of every single one of Heath's kids. For example, in the case of Eva Braun Campbell, this occurred when the couple attempted to check out of the hospital. Said his then fiance Bethany Zito, when the Franklin County Children and Youth Service informed her they were taking the baby, I started screaming, I got hysterical, I had just been checked out. I was breastfeeding my daughter for two days straight. I changed her, I had clothes on her. Heath himself stated of this, I'm not allowed to have children because I'm a Nazi. Jewish people came, they took my kids all over a name. I didn't murder anybody, I didn't hurt anybody. What crime did I do? Yes, I'm guilty of loving my children. Society thinks the Germans and the Nazis are bad people when really we're not. We're family oriented. <laughs> You're also a Nazi, Heath. For <laughs> sake. The state, on the other hand, says that neither the names nor his political leanings have anything to do with their decision to take the children, they probably should, but rather the lengthy history of violence and abuse in the household, which was first discovered when Heath attempted to have a birthday cake made with Happy Birthday Adolf Hitler when his son was turning six. Officials then investigated the household, with the result being a couple of his former wives stating that he both frequently beat them and variously threatened to murder them, among other various red flags that authorities found. Perhaps not doing himself any favors, in one custody dispute case in which he was attempting to get custody of his 18-month-old son, Heinrich Hans Campbell, who was taken shortly after being born in 2011, while Heath did technically dress up for the hearing, it wasn't in a way that exactly endeared him to the authorities. Rather than wearing something like a suit and tie, he showed up dressed in a full Nazi military dress uniform, as well as sporting a Hitler-inspired mustache. What's wrong with you, Heath? You d His prominent tattoo that says kill Jude's probably didn't help either. And yes, for those German speakers out there, it did indeed say Jude's instead of Juden. <sighs> Moving on to something much more silly, but nonetheless still not appreciated by the child in question, in New Zealand, parents named their daughter Tallulah Does the Hula from Hawaii. When the girl was nine, the matter was brought to the attention of the courts during a custody dispute. Up to this point, the girl had simply told everyone at school her name was Kay and that she was extremely embarrassed by her name. The judge in the case, Rob Murphy, ordered the state to temporarily take custody of the child, during which time the name was changed to something not publicly disclosed. Said Judge Murphy, the court is profoundly concerned about the very poor judgment that this child's parents have shown in choosing this name. It makes a fool of the child and sets her up with a social disability and handicap unnecessarily. Obviously, what is wrong with some people? <laughs> Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that video. I enjoyed making this video while wearing Mac Weldon. That chair is really loud. You should be wearing Mac Weldon too. Just go to Mac Weldon, use the code BRAINFOOD. There is a link below, all of that good stuff. And I'll see you next time.